So, I have been a pen tester for about six months, um, and coming into this role, I had some preconceptions about what the job would be, what it would be look like. I, you know, spent about a year and a half of my life working towards this role and wanting to land a job in cybersecurity and as a pen tester. Um, and I came in with a few preconceptions, a few personal myths, and um, I've been debunking them personally as I've been going through pen tests. Um, now my role is a bit of a unique role. I'm not just a pen tester in my cybersecurity job. I am also a SOC analyst. Whenever there's no pen tests going on, I help out in the SOC. Um, but when pen test engagements come up, they assign them to me and I work on them. That means I average about two pen tests a month. Um, and those are about one week long each. Uh, and mainly focusing around web apps and APIs at the moment, hopefully getting into some internal stuff, uh, but the main need has been within the web app space, which has been really fun. Now, what an average pen test looks like is that you generally have a week to dive into an application and find its flaws. It's pretty simple and straightforward stuff. Uh, then you write a report that gets reviewed uh, internally, by technical staff and GRC staff. And then once that's ready, that gets sent to the client. Um, clients are able to then respond and ask questions about the report. And then sometimes we retest uh, for remediations and make sure that uh, if a certain vulnerability is found, that we can't bypass whatever the remediation that was put in place, um, that we can't bypass that. Now, there have been a few things that I've learned along the way um, that have highlighted to me that pen testing is not what I expected. Uh, and they're not bad things. They're just things that um, I guess the more you do the job, the more you learn and the more you realize what it actually entails. Now, the first thing that I think I've learned um, over the past six months is that pen testing is not about getting RCE and popping a shell. It's not about getting remote code execution and getting a shell on a system and then saying, look, I can privilege escalate and I've got this, I've got this box. That's usually not the goal of a pen test. Now, if you find that vulnerability, great. But most of the time you're focusing on the breadth of testing, not the depth. You don't want to see if you can take an XSS all the way to RCE. You want to know whether each individual component of the application or network uh, is is vulnerable or if it's been configured properly or if there's any security flaws or, or business flaws, um, business logic flaws, all of that kind of stuff. So you're looking more, you know, breadth ways, width of tests rather than simply depth. Um, and a lot of the times we do CTFs where we're looking for depth. We want to get the one vulnerability that then leads us to shell on a machine, which then we can privilege escalate from and get root. And that's kind of not the point of a pen test. The point of a pen test is to uncover flaws and misconfigurations and vulnerabilities so that they can get remediated. Um, and kind of a different approach. And sometimes you don't actually turn up anything interesting. I was recently on a pen test where most of the things that I found were simple misconfigurations, like the server was showing its, like in the headers, what version of the CMS it was or what version of the server it is and that kind of thing. And, and it's very low risk. It's more of an, you know, low to informational finding, but those kind of things can help attackers to identify what vulnerabilities may exist um, on a system. So it's not a completely interesting find. It's not like I found an interesting way to exploit a user's session or steal cookies or anything like that. It's more of a, these are good things that need to be best practice. Your application is actually pretty good, but we want to take it to the next level where your cybersecurity maturity of your development team and all of that is, is really good. And finding and not finding things or anything interesting is a good thing because it's saying that whatever they're doing as a development team, they're doing it well. And that's, that's an awesome thing. The next thing that kind of leads on from that is that I've, I've learned that pen testing is more about, is more of a marathon rather than a sprint. 
See, coming into it with the hack the box mentality where you're trying to find the remote code execution or the password or whatever to get a shell on the machine and then do some privilege escalation and get root, that kind of conditions you to think of how can I sprint through this? How can I get to the flag the quickest way and the simplest way? Um, but that's not pen testing. That is simply hacking and and it's not a bad thing and i'm going to talk about this in a little bit where that's a good thing um, and how that's something that i can leverage but in terms of pen testing you want to think of i've got a week with this application or with this network and i want to know as much as i can about this i want to know how it works what are the functionalities what are the quirks what are the different things i want to know this like a developer knows this not that you will get to that level, but you should be able to get to a point where you really know how requests are made, um, speaking of web apps, how requests are made and how the app functions. And so then you can think about how it's meant to function and things that you may be able to exploit in that way. Um, that's more of what you want to focus on. And that takes more time um, than simply doing you know, trying to find the CVE and that kind of thing. So I've definitely been learning that it's more of a marathon rather than a sprint. And because you have more time, it's a little bit more relaxed. You have time to learn about the environment you're testing. You have more time to focus on what is actually exploitable rather than just kind of rushing through things. I've also learned that reports are really important. It matters how you communicate issues to clients. It's not just about finding a bug and exploiting it and, and doing a really cool hack. That's awesome. That's fulfilling technically for me, but that brings no value to a client. If I can't communicate that in a report to a client, then it's kind of a useless thing. Um, so reporting is kind of everything at the end of the day. When it comes down to it, you are giving the client a report to help them fix issues but also to help the business know where to allocate funds. Do they need to invest more money in the development team for security training? Do they need to invest more money um, in security generally? Or are they giving enough funding? You know, those questions are what the business is asking. And these reports help answer those questions. And it helps them know what to actually fix. And so reporting and communicating the business risk and the risk to the application or environment or whatever is super important. And learning to report well, learning to communicate in that style well is like super valuable. And I'm really enjoying learning how to report well. I like writing generally. Um, I've written a lot over the years. And so learning this new style of communication is really fun and really cool for me. One of the last things that I've, I've been learning that's kind of blown my expectations is that you learn something new at every pen test. I kind of went into this thinking that like I should have it all together at the start and know how to do it really well from the beginning. But I found that every single pen test that I've done, I've learned and gleaned new things, not just attack techniques, but how to actually perform the pen test in a way that's um, efficient in a way that bolsters my methodology and makes me a thorough pen tester and in a way that thinks more of how can I attack this in a, in, in a way that, that will ex exploit the right things, that will uncover the right things, looking for the right places to perform attacks. Um, and that's been really cool. I've really enjoyed the learning process. You know, it's kind of hard sometimes to quantify how much I'm learning and all of that, because there's no like piece of paper that ticks off. Yes, you've, you've passed this thing and you pass this thing, but realizing that like every time I come to a pen test, I'm more confident and more knowledgeable about what I'm doing. That's an awesome feeling. That's, you know, that's really good. That's a good sign. And finally, it's kind of taught me how to approach resources like Hack the Box, CTFs and all of that. I think previously I was like, I need to learn as much as I can. Um, and I need to learn how to, you know, root boxes and, and all of that. And that will make me a good pen tester. That will get me good for this, uh, for this job. But I've, what I've realized is a lot of the times doing CTS and all of that, they really focus on niche skills. 
that's not a bad thing, but it's also not a great thing at times. So for me, it was the whole marathon, not sprint thing. I, I found myself that like, if I couldn't find some sort of vulnerability, some sort of exploit, then my worth as a pen tester is way less. Um, but seeing CTFs and seeing things like hack the box and try hack me and, and doing those boxes kind of now the way that I approach them is how can I learn a particular skill, say it's cross-site scripting or SSRF or um, how can I do command injection better or all that kind of thing. I'm seeing those particular skills and going, what is a new way that I can exploit this? What is a way that I haven't thought about it before um, with something that I haven't encountered before? How can I think about this application from the developer's perspective, what they've implemented, and then how can I circumvent or bypass those security controls or the way that they've implemented it in a secure way. Um, and then that helps me really practice that critical thinking, that, that thinking outside the box of how I can um, exploit certain vulnerabilities and that kind of thing. Um, to then be able to bring those skills to the table when I'm performing a pen test for clients. Um, and then that ultimately makes me a better pen tester. So it's not so much how many boxes can I root, how many um, hacks can I pull off, but it's so it's more about learning the particular skills and then applying those across uh, a pen test. Niching down on, I'm getting better at now, I'm focusing on XSS or... SQL injection, and then um, going from there and applying that to a real pen test where I see forms and, and searches and all of that and going, oh, I've seen this before. I can now apply this particular skill in this situation. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of things that I've learned over the last six months. Um, if you are a new pen tester or you want to become a pen tester, let me know in the comments if there was anything that resonated with you or if you have any, you know, misconceptions that you came into pen testing with and now they've changed. Um, and I will see you in the next one.